Hey, me Chris, and I'm going to start a Spongebob game series where I view every Spongebob game that I can in chronological order, starting with Spongebob Squarepants for Legend of the Lost Spatula for Nintendo Game Boy Color, released on March 14th, 2001, and in the US, but on March 4th in Europe by Vicarious Visions, and it was published by THQ. Anyway, the plot is that Spongebob finds a statue and asks Mr. Krabs what it is. Mr. Krabs says it's an entrance to the Flying Dutchman's world, and then said there used to be a city in the Fly Cookie ruled all with a golden spatula, but Mr. Kablubius buried the damn city, and then the Flying Dutchman took over the city, then ruined the, and married the city to keys in the Gear Lagoon. Spongebob gets told to find the keys so he can find the spatula and make Mr. Krabs, which I mean, so Spongebob could be a master fly cook. Then, bam, you're in a hoverboard and you have to get to level 1. And to go to level 1, you have to go through Sandy's Parks, then Gulligan's Beach to Sand Park. I don't know what it's called. I think it's called a sand line or coastline, so I'll just call it that. And then you have to go to Miss Puff's Boating School and get the whole monitor shorts. Then you go back to Gulligan's the Dune, then you do the platforming level. There's a bunch of platforms made of bubbles that move up, down, left, and right, and the platforms that stay still, too. There's also these chests that can give items, or like pants, or just give you a huge fucking middle finger and say April Fools. Speaking of middle fingers, the attack that Spongebob had included at the beginning of the game is literally the most prophetic attack I've seen in the game. Like it sometimes works, but Jesus is that kind of way to actually happen. The graphics look weird. Like the color palette is really good, but the sprites the characters are really weird. Like I know the only the first season Spongebob was out at this time and heck it was 11 days from actually ending when this game released. But it doesn't replicate that look really well, and they clearly tried. Hell, they went as far as putting the bringing around town dance in the game. But to me, it fails on the SpongeBob sprites. Then Patrick looks too tall. Crabs is cute and short. Squidward is Squidward. Bubble Bass still looks like a Discord moderator. Gotta get that accuracy. And Sandy looks like a hamster. Also, the overall tone this game has feels like a bootleg. Like, the music feels off, the graphics look off model from the show, the controls really badly. Oh shit, I forgot about the controls. The controls are responsive for when they jump, it feels so fucking bad. Like, the physics are all fucked up, and you move like a literal brick in the air, and then you end up feeling like you will just die when you fall. And it doesn't help that the camera is zoomed in so closely to Spongebob we can barely see anything other than him and the ground. So let's creep that. It looks like shit, sounds weird, the controls are like dog water, you can't see anything, and you attack like an unborn fetus. The level design, while feeling impressive for being so big on a little Game Boy Color, but on a playable level, this is awful. Like, I constantly have to backtrack, and since the void is big, I need to go down 12 damn paths just to find some gay item. And the items actually help the game a lot. Okay, I listed a bunch of negatives. Now let's list some positives. The cutscenes look pretty good, most of them having original artwork, but they are the ones with clip art, but most look great, and even the ones with clip art still look pretty good for a Game Boy Color. The fan service is pretty good, where all the characters are there with their iconic lines, such as Plankton saying, I WENT THE CARNAGE! Sorry for my really shitty Plankton impression, Rest the suits to wear like Spongebob's hall monitor suit and the power wing suit from the Mermaid Man and Boy Boy episode from season 1. The locations like Drew Lagoon, Mrs. Puff's Loading School, the Crusty Crab, the Chum Bucket, Spongebob Squidward and Patrick's houses, all the character are here. And even though it's a weird aspect of the game, the music is an absolute fucking jam. Like sure, it doesn't fit with context of the show, but it sounds great for a game, let alone a shitty licensed game. So that's we recap. A clunky game that looks like shit in gameplay, but most of the time looks great in cutscenes, and music that jams with great fan service. So, what is there left to talk about? Well, I have the option to talk about every other level, but I ain't gonna do that, cause why? It's not necessary, and I suck at this game so much I just downloaded a gameplay video from the Long Play Universe. I will leave a link below, but what I what would I rate this game? Well, I will rate it a 5 out of 10, because it's a subpar platformer with shitty graphics most of the time, but it has XT music, good fan service, plus some good cutscenes, 90% of the time, 95% of the time. Also, I found two things really interesting. One, actually not that interesting, being a commercial, which I will play now, and also leave a link in the description.
And the other thing was this disc that claims it has the game's information and more importantly, the game assets. Holy fuck no, we may have Super Sponge 2.0 in terms of source files. And if anyone watching this has the disc or know if it has the files online, like archive.org or something where the files are publicly viewable to everyone, please let me know and leave a link in the comments. That wraps us up on this review of The Legend of the Lost Spatula. Next time, I'm reviewing Super Sponge for the PlayStation 1 and the Game Boy Advance. Haha, <laughs> just kidding, I'm not doing the Game Boy Advance version because it's the exact same thing as the PS1 version. But until then, that's it. See you guys next time, and thank you very much for watching. I appreciate you all. Goodbye.